Hello, my lovelies, and welcome to another episode on the Truly Bedrock server. That's right, guys, we are back for episode 30, and you know what that means. Today is a comment library episode. I am super excited. I always enjoy going through comments and uh, picking these. So without further ado, let's just jump into the episode. And as I mentioned, this is a comment library episode, but it is not going to be the only thing we do today. I also have a few other things to show off, and one of those things is right behind me. Obviously, this is not done. <laughs> this clip face is a work in progress, but we have one stream down and a few more to go this week, so I'm hoping we can get the majority of this done, but I did want to show you what we've done so far. In stream, I decided that I was going to incorporate this little pond that Mr. Prowl and Rogue made for Cuban way in the beginning of season one, and I was going to tie it all together. And I did that by making this nice little stream. It is not fully decorated yet. I will get there, but for now, I just have laid out the direction and brought it up to this waterfall right here. It's just nothing special, just super little. It just kind of ties it together in this nice little scenic area. I think that it gives us something to look at at the base of the mountain because obviously this is big and obtrusive and <laughs> huge. So I just think that that's gonna be a nice accent. Right here, I plan on doing a custom tree to divert your eyeline. So I'm not gonna make one of these spruce trees that I tend to make at my base. I'm going to do probably more of a willow or, or something, just more uh, probably with birch leaves. Not sure yet, haven't really decided, but that's what's gonna go there so that we can divert the eye line and not make it look like it's just this big, huge wall. But this is this is what we have so far, and I really, I'm liking how it's taking shape. I mean, obviously there's more details I have to put in, but for now, I think this is a really great start and a good indication for what's to come. I think it ties together very well. The overhanging leaves make it look like it's a little bit unkempt and I think that ties in with his gothic style pretty well. And no matter which direction I look, I'm really, I'm really, really happy with it. I don't think that there are too many square lines, even though there are a lot of lines. It just is exactly how I was picturing it. So I am, I am very, very pleased. But let's not dwell on this little project right now. Let's head into the nether and head over to uh, get these comments in. All right, so here we are in the nether and I have, of course, added my pages already off camera just so that you didn't have to see me typing. But let's just jump into this. So for episode 20, which was the last comment library, Free Spider 14 said, I love how you show your care for your fans enough to include us in an episode. Thanks from all of your fans. And I picked this comment because I think it's really important. I think it's important to let the people who watch you and follow you and, and take time out of their day to include you, to show them some love. And that's why I have the patron slash supporter area. And that's why I have the comment library is so that you guys know that I do pay attention. I do really appreciate all of you. And I am here really to, to talk and, and get to know you guys. And yeah, I don't know. I just, I really enjoy the comment library and I think Zloy did an amazing job with it. For episode 21, it was our Prankmas episode. So we spent this episode over at Tiz Tom's base. We gave him the toilet paper and I chose a comment from Miss Brittany mostly because the toilet paper roll pixel art was her idea. So I wanted to include her in this episode's comments and her comment was, I giggled too hard at this. You may have to rest your voice so you can now, <laughs> so you can give my eulogy now. 
So I thought that was funny because, <laughs> you know, I, I really enjoyed that prank. I have never really done pixel art, so it was uh, an experience to say the least, but I had a lot of fun and I'm glad that you guys seem to like it. In episode 22, it was my adventure with Miss Liara and it was the bee update. So we went out on an adventure, found ourselves some beehives and let's just say it was a giggly mess of a fun time. And so for episode 22, I picked a comment from Liara herself and she wrote, this was such an adorably fun time to come do with you. I'm so glad we got to go. And I agree, it, I could not have picked a better person to explore the cuteness of the new update with than Lee. So thank you Lee for inviting me. It really was a blast. And for episode 23, we kept the bee adventure going and we met up with Prowl to discuss the bee aviary, or aviary, I don't know, the bee area that he wanted for his farm. So we got together, the three of us discussed kind of what we had in mind and yeah, so it was a pretty good episode. I had a lot of fun. And the comment is from Randy who said, is the bee and Jesse B short for bee queen? And I picked this episode because he was actually the first person since the update to like make a pun of Jesse B. And I just had to include it because I thought it was really funny and I approve. And in episode 24, we got our prank miss gift from Mr. BJW who gave us a pineapple pizza. And if you guys do not know my stance on pineapple pizza, it is no. <laughs> that's just, that's my stance, just no, just, just no. And so I picked a comment from Mad Sloth because I knew it was coming. In the episode, I said, any fruit does not belong on pizza. So no fruit on pizza. And of course, Mad Sloth wrote, team, any fruit, on, any fruit does not belong on pizza, but tomatoes are fruits. And I knew this was coming, but the thing here is I can't have tomatoes. So I don't put tomatoes on my pizza, so my stance is still no fruit belongs on pizza. And in episode 25, we began work on Prowl's blacksmith area. And I had a lot of fun in this episode and you guys really seemed to like it. So I was happy with it. And the comment I picked was from Wraith Gaming who said, wish I could design and build like you do. I always ask others to help with my designs. And I picked this comment because that's a comment I get a lot. I get a lot of people saying, oh, I wish I could build like that. And I'm just picking this comment to say, you can. It just takes a lot of time and effort. I, I guess it's one of those things where I used to watch so many Minecraft videos. I would watch Green. I would watch uh, Good Times with Scar. I would watch Python. I would just watch so many people who built or, or did um, terraforming because it was something I was interested in and I sucked at it. <laughs> so I was awful i did all of those you know just plain oak builds where like they had like the same pointy roof and it looked like a box and after i don't know a year or two of just really tweaking everything that i did and finding a style that i was comfortable with it started taking shape so i just wanted to say anyone can be a builder anyone it does not matter if you think you suck if you think you're amazing just Everyone can do it. You just have to put in the time and I love to see what everyone creates, honestly. And in episode 26, we had the so much fail episode. Just everything that could go wrong with that recording did. I had software failure. I had time lapses get deleted. It just was a big old mess and I was not happy with how anything was going that day. But at the end of the video, I came up with a stable that I really genuinely liked. So I kept that episode up even though I was not completely happy with it because I wanted to show that you don't always get everything right. Like everything can go wrong and you can still, if you keep going, come up with something that you're satisfied with. And 
Uh, for that episode, I picked a comment from Granny T. Fierce who said, he he told you so, lovely. Stable, lovely, stable barn and house, or barn house hybrid thing. And I picked this comment from Granny T. Fierce because she's amazing. She is somebody who has been on my channel since I pretty much started. She's been around and even though she doesn't comment all the time, she has always been so supportive and so loving. And the he he told you so, I believe that's the episode where I hit a thousand subs and I was blown away. And she's one of the people who knows I never thought <laughs> that I would get to a thousand. It just, it wasn't a thought in my head. And just having somebody be there to say, you know what, I knew you could do it. And it meant a lot to me. So thank you, Granny. And thank you to everybody who subscribed because you honestly blow me away every day. And in episode 27, we finally did the storage area for the bee, um, the bee farms that we're doing with Prowl. And it was a crazy design. <laughs> and a lot actually happened in that episode. But the comment I picked was from Marco Zetta, who said, how many of my pets are you going to kill? <laughs> so <laughs> I picked this episode because it made me laugh. Mark is one of my patrons. And one of the perks of being a patron is I will name something, like a pet after you, uh, after a certain rank in, in my tiers. And he always picks a pet that is just the most inconvenient. I think his first one was a baby slime. And if you don't know, baby slimes can literally jump one, one block. And if they jump off of that one block, they'll die. So he had about three slimes who died. And so finally he was like, okay, I'll pick a fox and you have to name it Tiz Tom. So I named a fox after him and then I found out that wild wolves kill foxes so uh fox tis tom died <laughs> and I have yet to name another one after him but yeah that is what that comment is and it made me laugh I am so sorry Mark in episode 28, we built our supporter area at our base. We did Scam 2 from one Mr. Tiz Tom, and we also rescued some bees from Prowl's bee farm. And the comment that I chose was from Zugov, who said, unsure if correcting that it's honey or if Jesse is talking in the third person and calling herself honey. And I picked Zug's comment because it genuinely made me laugh when I read it. It was one of those things where I was just like, of course, of course Zug would point that out. And I just had to include it because it made me smile. So thanks, Zug. And finally, for episode 29, we started work on our cliff face or the landscaping around Cuban's community build. So his community build, he hired... Uh, Killadrona and I to fix it up because he wasn't happy with it. So Killa finally finished the house and uh, it was my turn. So we started that. And I picked a comment from Corthal because he put absolutely loving the terraforming on this hillside. It's really coming together incredibly well and that water feature is love. So I picked this comment because I really appreciate it. I am one of those people. I spend so much time on trying to tweak the details and and I'm so hyper focused I sometimes think oh man this just does not look good and after I put up that video I wasn't sure if I liked the landscaping and so Quirthel just coming in and saying no it's looking great it really like boosted my confidence and made me feel good so thank you Quirthel I appreciate it and uh, I hope that you all like it so far and with the comments out of the way, there's one more thing that I want to talk about today. And uh, it's a big one. So a lot of you guys have been like, Jesse, what are you going to do about this moon? Jesse, how come nobody is talking about it? I thought after the Halloween episode that you guys were going to go and you were going to figure it out and it was going to be this thing. Oh, don't you worry, guys. I have been making plans. I have been kind of assessing the situation and I think it's time we talk about what's going on. So I've come all the way back to our base because I have a little something to show you. Off camera, I have been working on 
a little um, mood board. <laughs> like I have been thinking that something is off, something is up, and I think it's time to let you guys in on what I'm thinking. So over the weekend, we had the truly bedrock live stream anniversary day. And while the anniversary day was going on, a moon rock fell and pretty much destroyed the shopping district. I mean, like, it, it's a whole big shambles right now. And I, I can't get past it, right? This one seems random. This one doesn't seem like the rest and I need to know why. So, the things that I have listed right now are Foxy's trying to steal the moon rock. Why? If you are not aware, Mr. Foxy No Tails has been um, plotting to get the moon rock and I don't understand why. He was there when the zombies all came back to life. He was there when they tried to eat our faces. They killed Mr. Onion. Why would he want that moon rock? I just don't understand it. So I think we need to do a little bit of investigating into said fox. And uh, that brings us kind of to the next point. Moon rocks all falling naturally or targeted. Before the live stream day, it kind of seemed like the moon rocks were falling targeted. Uh, like it, it didn't seem random to me. Most of all of the moon rocks were landing on villages. So we had Zloy's village, uh, the, the village or uh, the town of Revive. It had that huge moon rock and that seemed like, okay, that's one thing. But then we had Foxy, whose library, his trading hall, just got absolutely demolished. That big, huge crater. And I was like, okay, that's two villages in a row. Maybe a coincidence. And then Lee, Lee's village, got smashed to bits by a moon rock. That is not a coincidence. Three times in a row, it targeted villages. And now, all of a sudden, it's in the shopping district. I don't understand. This one seems deliberate. This one seems like, why the shopping district? And I think that that needs, uh, that needs some looking into for sure. So I think our next step is to investigate the crash sites because we're not gonna know, maybe they had something there. Maybe the moon is targeting people who are at fault. Maybe it's like nature being like, hey, stop messing with me, but who knows? So I think we need to go investigate for sure. But do we do this alone? Is this something that we put on our investigator pants and our big girl shoes and go out there and try to do it on our own? Who can we trust? I'm not sure. I'm not sure if anybody on the whitelist is trustworthy or if I should just let you guys kind of lead my investigation. So what do you think? Do you think that we should partner up with somebody? And if you do think we should partner up with somebody to investigate, who do you guys want to see it with? Because usually I would take Liara or I would take, you know, Zloy or Foxy even, because those are people I know who know how to get stuff done. But those are all people who got hit. Those are all people who might be hiding something. So I don't think I can trust any of them. But that leaves a lot of members unaccounted for. So what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below if you think we should team up or if you think this is a solo mission. But you guys, that's actually all I have time for today. So thank you so much for stopping by. Honestly, I appreciate you guys more than I can say. And if you did like this episode, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button because it genuinely helps out the channel and me. And if you want to keep up with me, if you would like to chat a bit more, I do have my social media linked in the description below. I have a Twitter, I have a Discord, and I have a Patreon. So, if you would like that, 
that's where you can find it. But without further ado, I hope that you guys have a truly amazing day and I will see you in the next episode. Bye guys. Catch your and you sleep now.